Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is A Course in Miracles 365, and I'm Reverend Tomas. Well, we're right in the midst of the supplement called the Song of Prayer. And just to give you a little bit of context and background for what we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, in this Song of Prayer, prayer itself, the act, the experience of prayer, Remember, it's experience as well as something that you do. Spirituality being all about experience. That's analogized here to a ladder with rungs that one climbs, like a conventional ladder that you use to get up to change a light bulb or that you throw against the side of a house to get onto the roof. So we start off at the bottom and ascend. Now, ultimately, of course, there's not a ladder. This is a learning device that we use here in the world. In fact, this entire course is a learning device that we use while we appear to be here. And once it's no longer needed, it can be simply set aside. Even A Course in Miracles will ultimately be set aside. And why? It is all of our destiny to awaken. We've never left our source, and this is, in fact, a dream, a wild, mad hallucination. So how do we recognize that and wake up? Well, you've got it. <sighs> Spiritual practice. Whatever your tradition is, A Course in Miracles is just one of many different ways that one can remove the barriers to truth. All spirituality does that in one way or another. So it doesn't make any difference whether you have taken and adopted A Course in Miracles as the main component of your practice or not. It doesn't matter. You have something to gain by tuning in and watching. So I appreciate very much your commitment to taking a deep dive with yourself. In other words, your commitment to practice, that's the best thing that you can do for yourself and everyone else that appears to be here with you. So in the Song of Prayer, where we are is in a section that talks about praying with others. Remember, we've talked about prayer as a ladder that one climbs, that one ascends and well, you start off at the bottom rungs with the famous Janis Joplin song that I've referred to for the last couple of videos. You know, oh Lord, won't you buy me a Mercedes Benz? And I mentioned that in jest, but, but there's some element of worldly truth to it. Now that's an oxymoron if I've ever heard one, isn't it? Here in the world, we appear to have stuff. We have needs for stuff like money and a car, a black Mercedes late model with all the bells and whistles, all the trimmings, because our neighbor drives a Porsche and we got to keep up with them because we have FOMO. Pretty much. <laughs> Most everything that we do or are motivated by in the world actually has to do with something that we see someone else with, and we want that thing. We want that experience. We want the experience of being fabulously wealthy, like our neighbor who does have a Porsche. I mean, we don't know how fabulously wealthy they are. We don't know if they're in debt up to their eyeballs and stressed out about it, because all we see is the shiny Porsche literally the shiny object. Yeah. So we want that. We want what someone else has. In this process, 
the ego, this sense of separation between self and others, is firmly in place and remains firmly in place. We want something someone else has for ourselves, for me, me, me. I want a Mercedes. My neighbor has a Porsche. Me, 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 I, well, mm, yes, me, I. Well, that's the bottom of the ladder. It's the bottom rung. Now, when you catch yourself doing this, this does not make you bad, okay? It does not make you a bad person. It does not make you horrible or wrong. So don't, please, please don't heap more crap upon yourself for doing life wrong. The present moment is an opportunity for us to correct ourselves. It's an opportunity to accept the correction of the Holy Spirit and see things as they are rather than as we would have them be. It's a big difference, big difference there, right? The semantics are worth some discussion here. At the top of the ladder is direct communion with God. And along the way, from the bottom of I want a Mercedes because my neighbor drives a Porsche, to the top, true prayer. In other words, our experience of who we really are. Yeah, There are many rungs. And how does one ascend them? Well, in this segment, praying with others, Jesus tells us, in fact, the italicized language, we go together, you and I, emphasizes this. That your brother, another person, is not separate from you. That you have a similar, in fact, an exactly the same shared interest. Even if you only see this for a millisecond. That constitutes the little willingness that the Holy Spirit needs to fill the entire gap. All we supply is the little willingness to see someone else's need as our own, to see that we have a common goal, a common objective. Now, on the lower rungs of the ladder, that might be that both of us want a brand new black late model Mercedes. Really, it could be a prayer for stuff. It could be a prayer for shiny objects. What matters is that you have a shared need. Now, that keeps you at the very lowest rungs of the ladder, of course. Why? It absolutely does nothing to undo a sense of separation. Do you still see yourself as separate? You see the car as separate. You see your neighbor as separate. But for just a fraction of a second, even, you have seen your needs as one. Now, what if you saw a different shared need? What then? What would happen? What would happen if the shared need or objective or goal that you saw with someone else, what if that were something other than a shiny object? What if that, in fact, turned out to be the peace of God? wanting the will of God. How about that? Because that is what everyone in this world wants, whether they consciously recognize it or not, and they can even actively deny it. We still want 
the exact same thing. Happiness, peace, those are just words that we use to describe the experience of who we really are, one with our creator, really one with God. So what happens when people join with this as the goal, the peace of God? Boom, ladder ascended. The thought system of A Course in Miracles is so profound that it's very, very unusual for someone who starts out in this material, and it doesn't make any difference what segment of the course you begin with, text, workbook, manual, doesn't make any difference. If this is your first exposure to it, so be it. doesn't make any difference where the entry point is. It's very rare that we get the depth and the sheer magnitude and the radical, radical nature of this thought system. We don't usually get that right off the bat. Why? Because we want stuff. We've reached a point, and you most certainly, my friend, have reached a point where the ego's game of manipulation and suffering does not satisfy you. No, we all start off firmly entrenched in the thought system of our parents and our society and the world. And we do, and that's, that's where we start off. But there's something deep down within us that draws us to this material. You're watching me. There is a lot of other content out there on YouTube, is there not? I mean, there are a lot of short videos on TikTok. God knows, right? Actually, we say that. He doesn't know. Holy Spirit knows. Holy Spirit knows, right? The Holy Spirit, your inner teacher, helps you, helps all of us on the path to interpret, to reinterpret everything that we appear to see. This is the choice, present moment choice between the thought system of the Holy Spirit or the ego, between love or fear, not between light and dark, day and night, life or death, you name it. Yeah. This is the present moment choice. Now, when we want the peace of God, when we forgive, when we join with another, Remember, we go together, you and I, and we do. There is no separation of any kind. When we do this, we ascend the ladder. When you forgive, you ascend the ladder. And again, to recap, at the supposed top of the ladder, is our true communication, direct experience of our reality. True communication with God, who we all are. Now I say supposed top of the ladder, because again, the ladder is simply a teaching device. And we all start off with where we find ourselves. We start off where we appear to be. And I want to say this because people get frustrated on this path. There are many, many people, and I'm sure that you know some of them. You, you, in fact, might be one yourself. And if you are, no problem, right? So be it. There are many people who are interested in this course. Pick it up and put it down for a while. And you may pick it back up again. Sometimes even years later, doesn't matter. But it continues to call to you, doesn't it? 
Yeah, you just think, you look at it on the shelf and you think, yeah, one day I'll pick that back up. One day I'll pick that back up. Maybe that day is today. That'd be cool. Wouldn't it? And it, it's something that people do. The, the frustration I'm talking about. It, it's something that I, I see happen because people don't experience enlightenment in 15 minutes. There are plenty of workshops out there that promise enlightenment in a weekend. For almost all of us, it's a process because we require a gentle awakening, a process, in other words, whereby we set the ego aside one moment at a time. And please give yourself some grace if when we're talking about forgiveness, all that you can manage is forgiving yourself for something that you did, like spilling coffee on your pants this morning. If that's all you've got today, that's excellent. Do it. You're not doing it wrong. Nothing's ever wasted. The Holy Spirit uses everything that we give it to use. Yeah? Everything. Nothing's ever wasted. No meditation practice is ever wasted. No prayer is ever wasted. Even if it's just asking for a Mercedes Benz, no prayer with someone else is ever wasted, even if you're asking for something of this world. This video is just offered so that you might think about what if the goal were different? What if all you wanted, in fact, was the peace of God, that and only that? See, we get what we want to see. We see what we want to see. Following me? If you want to see conflict, you got it. All you have to do is turn on your Facebook feed. <laughs> That's pretty easy, isn't it? If you want to see the peace of God, that's also what you see. Now, we may have, and you may have yourself, a gradual program of awakening. Because that's not something that sits with the ego at all. So, no surprise if it doesn't sit with you. Cool thing about all this, it's a self-study course. Nobody yourself included. Nobody has to believe a single word that appears to come out of my mouth. I use the word appears here. Again, what you see and hear talking to you is a projected image on a screen. So when you see this image forgiving, when you see this image calm and peaceful and allowing the Holy Spirit to speak through it. When you see that, see yourself. All right, guys. Thank you as always for tuning in and for all of the likes, the comments and the subscriptions. And while I'm on that subject, just an invitation if you have not subscribed to this channel and you watch it regularly and you like the content, I most certainly invite those subscriptions. That's that little red arrow in the bottom corner of your screen. Hover your cursor right over that, pops up the subscription button. All right. And from there, you know what to do. Okay, guys, thank you as always for tuning in and I will see you again soon.